next is Alex. Uh, so Alex is the CEO and co-founder of a company called Scale. Uh, how many of you have heard of Scale? Okay, so Scale is really, really cool. Uh, I'll let Alex talk more about it, um, but when I saw Scale launch, I was really excited about it, and I desperately wanted him to talk here because there's something really cool. So here's Alex. Cool. Hey, everyone. I'm Alex. Um, sweet. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Alex. I'm CEO, co-founder of Scale. Uh, we launched about a year ago in June 2016, um, and I'm here sort of to talk about what Scale is and talk about a lot of our decisions while building it. So a little bit about me to start with. Um, I was a dropout. I dropped out of MIT. Uh, and before that, I was a tech lead on performance at Quora, and now I'm working on Scale, um, co-founded Scale about a year ago. So what is Scale? Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah, so before we dive into that, uh, let's consider a challenge that I faced when I was working on a different side project of mine. So suppose you wanted to build an app which would let you determine who the in doc in-network doctors were. Uh, so the problem is there's no really good APIs for any of this information. There's no single source of data or any websites that you can reliably scrape for any of this data. So it's really hard to determine how you would build an app that could capture any of this information. Uh, the one reliable way to find out this information is if you have a human go to a website, you can have them search in an insurance website uh, for in-network doctors and copy down that information and, uh, and that's basically the only way you can reliably get any in-network doctor information. So what if you could script at, in an API in plain English and ask people to do tasks like go to an insurance website, enter the information, uh, and copy down the information, and get the results of that information back to you in plain JSON? That's exactly what we tried to achieve with scale. So Scale is a developer API for human intelligence. So we combine AI and human intelligence to solve simple human tasks, stuff like image recognition, audio transcription, OCR, data collection, categorization, et cetera. Uh, so just like any modern API, it's a really simple REST API to create simple tasks. Uh, the example in this image is, is an image recognition task where somebody basically asks to uh, identify where all the cars are in an image. So just like any modern API, you can get started with one of our client libraries or you can start with a simple curl command. Uh, and then you get the responses back via a webhook which you specify in the API call and, and that's about it. So you, you simply specify the task that you want done and then you get high quality results back. Behind the scenes, we do a lot of work to uh, build a workforce of humans who is constantly working on these tasks, uh, training them, screening them for quality, uh, giving them optimized tooling, and making sure that we only give high quality responses back. So uh, we have a couple different products, as I was saying. So we, we solve a bunch of different types of tasks. The first is image recognition or image annotation. Uh, we, this is really to help solve a lot of computer vision use cases or help basically build applications to understand images at the same level of humans. So a bunch of, for example, self-driving car companies use us to help train their vision algorithms. We have an audio transcription endpoint which we use, uh, which can be used to basically generate high quality trans transcripts of audio. So for example, this is like Whale, I don't know if any of you guys know the app Whale. Uh, this is an answer from Justin Kahn on this app called Whale, which they use to transcribe the audio with. Um, categorization, to human categorize large volumes of data. For example, we worked with PNG recently to do a project where we transcribed large volumes of images that they had that their users had taken to figure out which brands were the most popular. Uh, comparison, to, to sort of ask humans to judge based off human subjectivity. So for example, we worked with Cloudinary, which is a CDN company, to determine which image compression algorithms look the best to humans. Uh, then OCR transcription to 
just to get humans to very high quality, uh, extract characters from images and documents. And finally, data collection, uh, like the in-network in doctor example that I mentioned before, to, to basically find information on the internet. So uh, that's, that's, ex that's what we are. Um, and we, from the beginning, have always been an API company. There's never been any way to create a scale task through a web UI or, or any way really unless you're, you're technical and you're a developer. And it's been really intentional. Um, on one side of the spectrum, there's, there's products like Mechanical Turk where it's a very web UI driven process, but, but our beliefs from the beginning were really to be an API company. Uh, and it's really because we have, we have a couple core tenants as a company that help drive that. Uh, the first is that we, we have to have a really long term view and that we do have a really long term view. Um, if you're an API company, you rely heavily on developers finding your API, getting really excited about it, and building really amazing applications on top of it. Uh, and all of that takes a lot of time. So you have to sort of be patient when you're building APIs. Um, the next is that uh, that software is slowly eating the world. And this really shouldn't surprise anyone here, but software is only going to enter more and more applications over, uh, over time. So the ability to have APIs which can be used in a wide variety of settings is only going to be more and more valuable, more and more ubiquitous over time. And the other big thing is that developers will use the APIs and the products that they in, that really match their use cases, that are the simplest to use, that, that have all the tooling that they need to build great applications. Uh, and that over time, it really makes sense to invest in the developer experience uh, so that your products are, are the best in the same way that consumer products uh, invest in the best developer ex consumer experiences. So uh, this is really around building great documentation, building great tooling, building great dashboards, etc. And so even though the developer community is, is small compared to other companies, the overall opportunity is really large. And the last one is this is really just the beginning. There will be more and more APIs over time. So far we've really only seen the beginning with like Twilio and Stripe, uh, and we're going to only see more and more huge APIs that, that are really easy to use. So I want to talk about a couple of the decisions we made while building the API. So the idea for a, an API for human intelligence is really broad. There's a lot of directions where we could take it. And our core challenge was really that we needed to create a software level experience for a very human driven product. So just like how Uber and Lyft have had to build really incredible user experiences, even though there's all this operational challenge and all this orchestration behind the scenes, we had to do the same, but for an API product. So the, the bar was only higher. We need to build a product that was extremely reliable for developers to, to use. So we need to build reliable quality, even though in actuality humans are incredibly unreliable. So the most important thing for us was to understand what it meant to give high quality responses and how do we ensure that for our customers. So the, the first thing was, was being able to define what high quality responses really means. And so you'll notice with a lot of the products that we have, uh, they could be sort of viewed as simple human tasks, audio transcription, image recognition, et cetera. And a lot of that was driven because we wanted to do things where there was a sense of intrinsic truth. For example, if you're identifying objects in an image, it's clear to a human where those objects are. If you're transcribing audio, it's clear to a human what the transcript should be. Uh, anything beyond that in complexity would have been really hard for us to do, to determine quality very easily. And so our focus, if, if we were to draw parallels between what we're doing at scale and, and sort of AWS, which is a product that we take a lot of inspiration from, we're sort of building the S3 right now. We're building the, the simplest products, the products that are most easy to guarantee quality, and then we'll build more and more complexity over time as we're, we're more and more confident that we're able to deliver on that. Um, and, and the last thing is, is how do we build backend processes which will actually ensure quality for our responses? Since at the core, our product is, is all driven by humans. There are, humans can be bad actors, humans can be unreliable, but we still need to provide really quality responses to, to our customers. And so being engineers, a lot of that was built off of uh, being very data driven, being very statistics driven to do that. So I wanted to quickly talk through one of the systems that we built. Um, and we have a bunch of other systems and models which we use to also guarantee quality. But this was sort of um, 
this is one of the, the most important ones, which is sort of this confidence-based QA system. So something that, that we've spent a lot of time building is this model which basically computes a confidence for a scaler's attempt on a task uh, based off of their historical performance on similar tasks. So we have, a lot of we have a lot of data about how scalers perform on tasks in the past, and we can use that to sort of inform how well do we expect them to do on this particular task. Once we have that, our main challenge is making sure that the tasks that we send back to the customer, that we're sufficiently confident that they're high quality responses. Um, and so we do this through, uh, through sort of a multi-step process. So first, a scaler will complete the task, just as you might imagine. And then we have other scalers who are trained up to basically be reviewers. So other scalers whose, whose sole job is to ensure that other scalers are doing quality work. And then we will send the task through multiple rounds of review and update the confidence in a Bayesian update every single time until we're sufficiently confident that the result is correct. So basically what this means is we'll basically continually check the work until we're sure that uh, it's, it's a software level response for our customer. And then similarly, if, if any reviewer rejects the work or our confidence is sufficiently low, then we'll just reject the work entirely and start from scratch. Um, and so that was just one of the systems that we've built to guarantee quality. We built a bunch more. And so you can sort of uh, sympathize that like the, the level of systems that you have to build to ensure responses for developers is there's sort of a new, there's a, there's a higher quality standard there. Uh, next are sort of some of the design decisions while, while building the API. So just as I mentioned before, an API for human intelligence is extremely broad. There's a lot of directions where, where we could take it. Uh, we could go anywhere from, from being sort of like an outsourcing company to being a mechanical Turk clone uh, and anywhere in between. And a lot of what we wanted to focus on is what is the core experience that we wanted developers to have? What is like, if we were to use a similar product, what's, what would we want to be able to use? And so some of the things that we chose to really focus on or some of the goals when building the API were one, to abstract away complexity, to make it extremely easy for developers to use, and then two, to create really simple building blocks. A lot of this was inspired by uh, our experience as developers using APIs like Twilio and Stripe and SendGrid, and knowing that, that really exquisite developer experiences were, were possible. So what does it mean to abstract away complexity? So, uh, I sort of alluded to this before, but behind the scenes, our, our product is extremely complex. We do a bunch of different things from, from finding scalers to do tasks, to training them, to building optimized tooling for them, to having the QA processes, uh, and, and everything in between. So it's a very both operationally and technically intense business behind the scenes, but we really had to ask ourselves, like, what part of all that we do is what developers really care about? And the realization we came to is, if we were a developer using this API, all we would care about is getting the high quality data back from the API, the high quality responses that are generated by humans back from the API, and then everything else we want to basically be abstracted away, we don't want to think about it, we don't want to care about it. And we want the, the product to sort of like scale seamlessly to our usage, we want it to be simply priced, et cetera, et cetera. So the abstraction barrier that we, we determined for our product was, uh, we are the abstraction barrier between quality data. So our customers and our developers will give us data in that they want humans to, to categorize or, or label in some way, and we just provide the high quality results back. And that entire decision, that defines exactly where our whole API sits. So that abstraction barrier to basically is like the first decision that we had to make uh, when building the API. Uh, and, and then after that, you just have to, you have to be ruthless in, in determining what should fit in your API. So we, we don't add anything related to humans, basically, in our API at all. We're, we're expected that we'll just handle all of that. We don't add anything, uh, like have any quality flags that, that customers will specify. It's all about, we will handle all the quality, we will handle all the humans, and then everything beyond that uh, is, is our purview, and we abstract away all of that complexity. So just sort of wanted to walk through an example to demonstrate sort of the simplicity that we wanted to provide to developers. So uh, 
in this example, the only thing that the developer will specify is I want somebody to draw boxes around all the parking lots in the image. They supply an image, and then they, they again specify, like, all I want annotated are parking lots. Then we'll go through the work. We'll send it to one or multiple humans to, to complete the task. And then what gets exposed to developers is, is just the boxes. So they don't see anything else that happens behind the scenes. And then what gets sent back is just a JSON of all the boxes. And they can look at the boxes within the web UI. But the whole abstraction barrier is just the data layer. Uh, there's no knowledge of any of the tooling or no knowledge of, of anything beyond that for the developer. The, the last idea I sort of wanted to touch on is the idea of creating really simple building blocks for developers to chain together. So uh, we knew that there were hundreds and hundreds of different use cases for an API for human intelligence. And so we had, we had two decisions, right? We could either create an incredibly broad, incredibly generalizable API, which people could specify sort of any task under the moon, that would have been very difficult for us to ensure quality of, as I sort of discussed before. Or we could focus on tasks that we think are, are simple building blocks that can be chained together in interesting ways, and then make sure that we could support a variety of use cases from that. So we, we chose the latter approach, um, and we were really focused on picking tasks which were interoperable uh, and, and really easy to chain together. So for example, categorization, comparison, uh, all of these tasks are really sim easy to insert into workflows and build complex processes from. So let's walk through a quick example. And this will be a toy example, so don't uh, it isn't like a legitimate thing that anyone should really build, but it sort of demonstrates that it's very easy to chain together the API requests and how is one of our goals. So suppose you wanted to be able to take, have users take photos of cereals in an aisle and then uh, basically determine which cereals were most liked among people in general. So you could send a, an image recognition request of the image to isolate each particular uh, cereal box in the image. Then you can send a categorization request of the box to determine what brand the box is. And then you can send comparison requests to scalers and ask people to determine, you can run a tournament where you can determine which serial brands are most preferred among scalers. Um, and, and that's exactly how easy it is to chain together these requests. Uh, we, one of the goals was in the webhook logic to make it very easy to build these complex chains of tasks. Uh, and that's something that, that's sort of shown through in our API design. So some final words of advice um, for those of you who are building APIs or thinking about building APIs. Um, the most important things uh, and, and some things that we sort of learned along the way. Uh, I'll sort of preface this by saying, and this, this is the last bullet point, but the most important thing is to constantly talk to users, talk to developers, uh, and get a sense of what are the actual problems that you want to solve for developers um, and, and be able to really have that dialogue with them since that's basically the most important thing you can do if, as, as a builder, as a maker. Um, it's something that YC really drilled into our heads, and it's something that I think is really important as you build things. Um, so the most important things are to really abstract away complexity for your developers, uh, make sure that you have the constant dialogue with them, understand what complexity they're willing to take on, and then really focus on, um, on building these, this incredible experience that really solves problems Make sure that you have a constant dialogue and understand what the problems you're trying to solve are. Cool. So that's about all I want to say. Um, it's been really exciting that our API has solved real pain points, and, and we've been able to be trusted by some really amazing companies like Alphabet, Gusto, Uber Eats, um, et cetera. And that's about it. So if any of this sounds interesting, or you're building something where scale might be a really useful tool, uh, you can try it out today, scaleapi.com, and our docs are on the website. Uh, and feel free to send me any feedback. Uh, and we're hiring, by the way, so um, uh, I'll be around for, I'll stick around for a little bit afterwards for you guys to ask me any questions. Cool, thanks.